Hey, welcome, or well, welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? Probably never. Who cares? I'm enjoying what I'm doing. You're enjoying watching it. Who cares if I get YouTube famous or not? Now, if editing Angie has remembered, you're going to be watching me in black and white because this is the latest instalment in my photo inspiration series and I am delighted that someone that I have collabed with on a couple of other films not the photo inspiration series yet but a couple of other films on my channel has agreed to collab with me on this series and that person is the ever wonderful Val from Gimme Lip and More. I really apologise if you can hear my stomach grumbling. Yes, shush, I will go do your cheese sandwich in just a minute. So, Val from Gimme Lip and More and myself, if you are new to my photo inspiration series, I have chosen one photo. We can only use the colours in that photo. We don't have to use all of them, but we can only use the colours in that photo to create our eye looks. And this whole series is to show how two people can use the same colours and the same inspiration. And so far, the looks have been very, very different. So it's just to show you that when you're watching a tutorial, just because the person you're watching has been inspired by the palette to do the look that they are doing. If you're inspired by something different, that's great because everybody is called to different colours, to different textures, to different combinations of colours. You have people who want really, really blended and seamless transitions between colours. And then you have people that want a more graphic, really harsh line between the colours that you've used. And these are not wrong. Nobody's choice is wrong in this, okay? That's the beauty about makeup. You do your makeup how you are inspired to do your makeup. And if you do one day blended neutrals and the next day harsh lines and really stark colours, great. You do you, boo. So, if you want to see exactly what colours I've got on my eyes, which palettes I used, and what the inspiration photo is, then my friend, grab a drink, grab a snack. Put your feet up, get comfy, and watch this. Hey, welcome back from the intro. It's mid-April. It's just gone half twelve. And it is so dark out there, you would think it was October. However, I need to get this film done. <coughs> so... You'll have to, I'm relying an awful lot on my two LED strip lights that I've got behind the camera. Um, I'm really sorry if that makes the lighting a little bit different to what you're used to, but, you know, just bear with. Oh, great, and now this eye's starting to stream. Yeah, that's great, thanks, I'm about to put makeup on. Fantastic. Oh, don't you love hay fever? Anyway, you will have seen uh, the intro, which hopefully I'll remember to do in black and white. And you will have seen the thumbnail, also black and white, so you know uh, this is another one in my photo inspiration uh, series collab type, collab series thing. Words, you'd never think English was my first language, would you really? Right, today I am collabing with the beautiful Val from uh, Gimme Lip and More. We've done another couple of co uh, collabs before, we did a... Um, a single monochromatic colour look where we gave each other a colour. Uh, we've also done like an ASMR collab as well where we're reading poems out that we like. 
So this is this is not my first foray into the world of collab, but um, I would have asked her to do this in this series a bit earlier, but she's been travelling and I wasn't sure how many palettes she'd have with her. Yeah, no, I was I was being kind and thoughtful. Um, but she actually messaged me and said, do you know what, I'm fed up of not talking to people, I'm fed up of not doing YouTube, I want to do something, um, I'm ready to collab now. And she told me which palette she got which helped me pick out a photo for us. And I've got a series of photos where alcohol was frozen um, and then looked at under, I believe it was an electron microscope, but I could be wrong. Um, and the most amazing colours came out. I mean, Guinness, for example, was like lime green. Guinness is black. Excuse me. I've, I've been to the Guinness factory. We did that on our honeymoon. Hello. Uh, but we're not doing Guinness today. We are doing champagne because, you know, that was a bit of a classy bird. So, classy bird. I thought we'd do champagne. So here's a picture. As you can see, beautiful blues, burgundies. I've got it on my phone here. Um, orange, yellows, a little bit of lime green in there if you want to use it, and some white. Now, the rules with this is you can only use colours in the picture. You can't add anything in that isn't already there, but you don't have to use all of the colours. So, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I'm going to be grabbing my Blue Blood palette for this. But I've done two tutorials with it. I've used it quite, uh, in fact, I think I've used it every day since I've had it. So, I'm going to use different palettes today. I know. I know. I don't want you to be too shocked by that. But, the palettes I am going to use. For the blue, I'm going in with my Oh My Glitter Queen Slayer palette. And I'm going to come... I've got a parcel coming on Wednesday, lovely. Um, I'm going to go in with this beautiful Lady Death shade here. Now it is a shimmery, but as you know, I don't worry about using shimmers in my crease. And also, depending on how you blend them and what brush you use, you can almost blend the shimmer away and just leave the base colour. And this colour is so soft and so beautiful and so stunning and I'm so going to use it today. I'm also going to use my Snow Angels palette. I still haven't put the review up for this year, I really should. Um, now I could have used the blue from this but when you compare it with the blue from Oh My Glitter, can you see why I chose to go with this one instead? Um, Wow, that's left an awesome blue streak on my shorts. I have shorts that I just like slob around the house in. Um, and, and they've got staining all over them from pigments and stuff because I'm a classy bird as well. Huh. But I'm probably going to use this burgundy uh, tilted. This is the problem. When I'm relying on my strip lights, if I bring this up close, it washes them out because you've not got the daylight behind. But I'm probably going to go in with this particular... Um, shade which is very cold for the burgundy and then for the orange and yellow and white I'm going in with my Certify Affinity palette I have pre-ordered the blue and green one it should be shipping very soon I can't wait I'm super excited to get that one as well. So, uh, I'm going to start bunging these on my eyes. Now, while I zoom you in, I'm going to have a little mini rant, okay? Now, at the start of all my films, I make a point of telling you that these are aimed at all skill levels, from beginner to expert, and if the film is too long for you, or you can blend faster than me because with my chronic pain, blending is painful. The constant repetitive movement. So, you know, I have to take 
regular like mini stops just to be able to complete the whole eye look. But I always say to you that if the film is too slow for you, if you blend quicker than me, you can speed me up. I have said this for a long time. And yet still I get comments. Your videos are too long. You need to shorten your videos down. Do you realise how few makeup channels actually have tutorials aimed at beginners? Because I'm telling you right now, there's not that many. Because when I was first starting, I found it really difficult trying to find a channel that I could follow that would be slow enough and in-depth enough and come up close enough that I could see what was going on. So, I was determined that when I started my channel, yeah, do you know what, I still haven't got 500 subscribers yet. And if I'd done shorter videos like everybody else does, I probably would have hit, I don't know, 600, 700, maybe even 800 by now. But I've always said that I want absolute beginners who've never picked up makeup before to be able to follow my tutorials. I'm going to start putting this on my face. Um... This is a Morphe M321, otherwise um, this is going to be an even longer video because I'm ranting. Um, I just... I tell you at the start of the video that it's aimed at all skill levels. So don't moan at me for the fact that it's a long film. There's a speed up widget, use it. And yet I still get comments like that. Now, if you look at my channel, you'll see I do all different kinds of looks as well. I do the really softly blended ones that are seamless and um, really sort of gentle blending up into the other colors. And then I do more editorial ones where I have harsher lines, where I want a more graphic or gothic y or, um, you know, a more punchy look. Because not everybody wants to do their makeup in exactly the same way. And yet I still get comments like, You should blend your eyeshadow out more. Yeah, uh, I do that in a lot of films. This particular film, I was going for a more graphic look, and yet I still get comments. Really. I wouldn't mind, but half the time these comments are from people who haven't even got a channel themselves. So, do you know what, until you've got the balls to film yourself and put yourself out there, and get criticism from people who don't even know you, don't start with me. Really don't start with me. So, I've always been very polite in my responses though, which anybody who knows me in real life knows how difficult that can be for me sometimes. Right, so I've just been, um, all I've got on my lids is um, MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre, which I've not set because I want these colours to be really punchy. You know, for an editorial look. <laughs> I'm sorry I let rip like that, I just... It really does annoy me when people just don't listen to what you say, you know. It's just so annoying, so frustrating. But I'm going in with one of these Ranimore Animal brushes. It's one of the ones that I recommended on my, um, one of my favourite brushes. And this is the Tapered Blending Brush number 6, the set from AliExpress. And what I'm just going to do is I'm gently going to buff over this to get rid of some of the sparkle. Now you can see that does make it look a tad patchy -er, but I'm going to be adding more colour in. I just wanted to make sure I had the depth of colour first and the shape before I started blending. 
Now Val is... Sorry Val, I didn't mean to have a rant in the middle of our collab. I was just a little bit frustrated this morning. Um, Val's a, a nurse, so, you know, she's she's got so much patience, love her heart. I mean, she's, she's uh, equally wise in years to myself. In fact, I think she might be a little bit wiser than me. Um, and like me, she loves colour. She adores bright looks, which is absolutely awesome. Just really building this colour up into this corner. Now I do struggle just on this top corner here, getting um, pigments to settle because of the the striping or the creasing that I've got there. But this blue is just so stunning. Yes, as I was saying, do you know what, I think I might actually go back to that previous Morphe brush and blend with that, because where it's a bit more densely packed, I think I'm going to get better blending from that one. I'm just cleaning this brush off on um, a clean washcloth. So I'm going to go back in with this Morphe, 3, 2, 1. Just got to be a little bit more patient. There's me talking about being patient and then trying to rush it with a more loosely packed brush. Yeah, there we go, that's better. That's the sort of colour I want. Um, yeah, so we've um, we've clubbed a couple of times and like me, she has such a soft, soothing voice. If I'm... I've got to be honest, when I get stressed, I either put one of her films on or I put one of uh, Linda Valinder's song, uh, films on who I've also collabed with because their voices just talk about you know calming the savage beast they certainly work on me, I'll tell you that for sure um, very relaxing I actually quite like this little bit of sparkle I've got coming through as well that can be the bubbles in the champagne. But yeah, Val, um, for quite a few months now actually, has been on a, a placement as a nurse, so she's not really been home very much, bless her heart. Um, of course she's not got all of her makeup with her, because when you're travelling you just can't, can you? You just... I mean, I know whenever I go anywhere, depending on where I'm going, um, depends very much which type of makeup I bring, you know, if I'm going to be going to, you know, hotels where I'm going to be out and about during the day and stuff, I won't take my high-end makeup, just in case. Um, not that I'm saying the staff would take it, but there's always a, a risk of you know, your, your makeup bag getting bumped when they're cleaning or whatever and palettes getting damaged. Mm. So I'll take more um, more sort of drugstore type palettes. But if I'm going to a mate's for a few days or whatever, then I'll normally take slightly higher end palettes because I know that you know, I'll be cleaning my own room up. I don't expect them to clean up after me if I'm staying at theirs for a few days. So. And you can see how beautifully this goes on. I do love her um, pigments. I've actually pre-ordered the, uh, the Lexicon palette. I missed it first time round because I just didn't have the money. Um. But she's actually doing it again and it's on pre-order so yeah I ordered a pre-order on that one I know my low buy is absolutely shot to pieces but I have actually adjusted my low buy rules but I'll talk about that in my next low buy video but um, fortunately I'm actually an affiliate with her now 
because I've bought so much stuff from her over the years. Um, and uh, so I've got a discount code you can use, which is listed in my description box. It's just bomber in all caps. And it saves you 10% on orders over £10. Um, I mean, before I even had my YouTube channel, I kept bugging her when she was first doing her lipsticks. I, um, she was taking kind of like suggestions from people as to, you know, what sort of colours they wanted, so that initially she was producing, obviously, ones that would shift a lot of units because, you know, indie brands starting off, you know, you need to you need to get your cash flow started. So you, you normally have to start off with colours that are more popular. You can see I'm just tapping and doing little circular movements to, to blend that with this brush because I just I want to keep the depth of colour with this shimmer. Um, and I just kept bugging her and bugging her and bugging her because I wanted a purple with um, like a silver shimmer in it. Bless her heart, she eventually did one for me. I think I wore her down to be honest. And she actually named it after me. Um, long term viewers know that I struggle with deep creasing here from when my eye was pulled around as a child so I do have to stretch the lid out to stop that striping there. Don't do that unless you have to or you will give yourself deep creases. Yeah, so she actually named a lipstick after me called Bomalicious. Um, unfortunately it is out of stock at the moment, but I'm sure if enough of you message her saying, uh, can, can we get hold of some Bomalicious please? I'm sure she'll um, create some more of it for me. Or for you. So, yes, yeah, so I'm now an affiliate with her. I do earn a wee bit of commission if you use my code. You don't have to use my code at all. There is no pressure on you to use my code. It's just there if you want to use it and save some cash money. That's nice, I like that. I like that a lot. Alright, so let's put that one down and clean this brush off. I've got quite a bit of fallout, but I haven't done my base yet, so I'm not overly stressed by that. Um, as I said, it was a shimmer anyway, so going into my snow angels and I'm going to go into berry cold which is this gorgeous deep burgundy same brush and I'm just going to tap this on the outer corner here bringing it up over the blue slightly and then I'm just going to Run that through the crease. Really sorry if you can hear my phone vibrating down there. I appear to be getting email after email after email at the moment. Fabulous. You know what, no matter what time I sit down to film, I either get phone calls or I get emails or something. So I'm just going to build some of this berry up through the crease. Again, just tapping the pigment onto the eye and gently I'm going to grab myself a little small mirror so I can look down here because obviously I can't close this eye beam blinding that one eye. I can't see what on earth I'm doing but I do need to be able to see. Oh, and there's the front door. Great. Hang on. We have local elections in our area. 
or someone wanting my vote. Yeah. Right. So as I was saying, I'm just going to build this colour up. Just through the crease. I'm really wanting the blue to be the main focus here. And I'm very, very gently sort of as I'm putting the pigment on, I'm very, very gently doing little circular movements just to soften the edge. But again, I am going for quite a strong graphic look with this because the picture is quite sharp and angled. So I want to try and reflect that in um, the way that the colours appear on my lid. this side. The difference being I can actually close my eye this side. So, wow, the fallout is real. I always get more fallout on this eye anyway um, because of that deep creasing and because when my eye got pulled around so much when I was a kid, um, the whole of the eyelid is, is less taut than um, my other eye is. So it just goes to show you folks, that's nearly 50, nearly 40 years ago that was pulled around and yet it still affects my eyelid now. So you might think, ah it's alright, I've not been getting any problems, I've been pulling my eyelid out for ages. Yeah, but you don't know what kind of problems you're creating for yourself as you get a bit older. Because I never used to have this problem until I hit, I think, sort of, probably sort of 35, 36, I first started to notice that I was getting more fallout this side. And then around about my 40th, I noticed that I was getting the deeper creasing. I was having to kind of work harder to get the pigment to adhere and not be streaky. So again, just tiny little circular movements all along that burgundy because I don't want to lose too much of the the depth of the colour. I do struggle just here as well getting pigment to lay down which is really frustrating because I know this pigment plus my eye was watering here earlier wasn't it? I bet that's what's giving me the issue. I might have to use the burgundy under the eye as well. Yeah that's just not wanting to go on is it? That's bloody annoying. Right, I'm going to, I think, cut my crease. Otherwise, that orange is not going to show up when I put it on. This is just a pad with some micellar water on. I'm just going to do a quick mini tidy up just so that I can make sure I've got my shaping how I want it. Okay. Now, uh, long-term viewers will have seen me do this before. New viewers? <laughs> well, you won't. So, this is how I cut my crease. I grab my tart shaped tape in porcelain beige 
and this is a nail art brush used for putting acrylic on but they go lovely and thin if I hold that against there you can see that see how thin that goes so it's perfect for cutting your crease because when I've got deep set eyes I have a similar problem to people with hooded lids in that when I cut my crease I'm probably going to have to come right up onto this blue above this purple but I will show you the easy way of knowing exactly what shape your eyes need to be when you're cutting your crease. So you start off, let me grab my little mirror down here again just so I can see what I'm doing. Just quite roughly, just wallop it on your lid, your mobile lid. Okay? And look forward, blink a few times, and it will move or smudge the concealer up onto your static lid so you can see exactly where you need to cut it. I might go for a bit of a halo eye today actually. So I'm just gently smoothing the concealer across. That's my micellar water falling over. But this is the beauty of these acrylic brushes. You can get real, real good accuracy with them. I used to use um, just an ordinary artist paintbrush. But you can see this top bit disappears back in because I've got such deep set eyes. So I do understand the issue that people with hooded lids have because we suffer with a lot of the same things and then what I'm going to do I'm just flipping the brush over and tapping all over that area with the side that hasn't got any concealer on and this will help pick up any excess pigment or excess concealer that could end up mixing with your pigment. Okay. I'm just going to wipe this on the washcloth because I don't like creams staying on brushes. Oh, pretty, pretty, pretty. Right. Going into my Affinity palette. Never find the brush that you want. There we go. This is the angled brush. I like these because you can get right tight up to the edges. So I'm going to start off with Sonia. I think. And I'm just going to pick up. Now this is a matte, all matte palette. That's fine. I'm just gonna grab my little my little mirror because I haven't got contact lenses in, so my viewfinder's a very long way away. I'm just gonna press this onto the concealer. I'm not sure this is going to be the right brush for it to be honest. Let me grab it. This is my um, Royal and Lang Nickel Sheet Pro. It's actually the Spot Concealer brush. Let's see if this one will work a little bit better at 
and laying that pigment down. Yeah, that's better. If you're finding that you can't get a pigment to work, it's always a good idea to try a different brush because you'd be amazed how pigments can react differently with different brushes. I'm just going to carefully... Do you know what, I wonder if I could use one of my other... I had a full set of these. I used the 12 to put the concealer on. This is the number 6. I wonder if these would give me... Oh yeah, this works even better. And because it goes so flat, I can get it really close to the top there without smudging it onto the blue. I'm just going to do that on that side there. And then do the same over on the outer edge of the concealer. And you can see I'm literally just pushing that onto the sticky concealer. That's why I do one eye at a time, because I don't want the concealer to dry out too quickly. Right, clean the brush off. And then I'm going to go into Salma, which is um, the woman that owns Certify. Her sister is Salma, and she owns a Blush Tribe. And those happen to be two of my favourite indie brands in the UK at the moment. So I'm just going to pop this Selma overlapping onto the orange. All the way up. And then just very gently drag the orange onto the yellow and the yellow onto the orange to get a blend because although I want this bit here graphic I just want the middle bit blended I know I know I like doing things like this I love mm. mixing um, different textures and techniques and finishes and I do like an all matte eye every now and again be amazed at the looks you can create without the need for shimmers. You can still get beautifully impactful looks with an all matte look. And you can see I've done this in like a V shape where it meets at the bottom and then kind of fades outwards as it goes up. Let's give that a really good clean off because I don't want any of the white to have yellow or orange on it. I am really liking this look though. I wonder what Val's look's going to be like. Because this is the beauty of this series. Uh, I'm going to go into Manasa which is the white in this palette. It's quite a creamy white. It's not a it's not what I would call a brilliant bright white. So I'm just gonna pack that on. To give us the the bright oomphy bit in the middle, if you know what I mean by an oomphy bit. Just keep building the white up until we've got 
the depth of colour that I want. So you see, you don't actually see the white until I blink or raise my eyes, and that's what I wanted. I wanted it to be like a sudden surprise. I mean, you could go over this if you wanted with um, some shimmer, you know, like a, a white highlighter. But I don't think it's necessary, to be honest. Right. And now I'm going to repeat all of that on the other eye. Depending on how long this video is, because this is more of a... Although it is a tutorial, this is more of more of a collab video. I might might speed up doing the other eye. I haven't decided yet. Um, I guess we'll find out when we watch it, eh? But again, just dollop it on thick, and then open your eye and blink a few times, and it shows you exactly how high to take your cut crease, or in this case, a halo eye. go off camera and I am going to do my um, foundation I really. forgot the word and I will be back to finish off the rest of this eye look see you instantly okay I am back uh, I'm going to go in with my Snow Angels palette. I didn't even show you that, did I? There we go, Snow Angels palette. And I'm going to go in with that berry shade again. I'm going with this flat top brush. And I'm going to run this. Connecting to that outside on the top lid. I'm just going to run this right underneath. My lower lash line going probably two thirds of the way along and then just kind of flicking the tail end because you, you all know that I do my highlighter here and carry it down so yeah. Same thing this side, I still have issues trying to get pigment to sit there but I think that's really because my eye has been watering because of the hay fever so because you can see over here it's it's absolutely fine so it's just it's just my eye being annoying as usual. Right, just gonna... Okay, I did that a little bit thick at one side, so I need to thicken this side up. This is the problem, not having peripheral vision this side. I, I tend to flinch a little bit and then can end up with the... Uh... You know like when you're doing your, your winged liner and you're aiming for something subtle and you end up with an Amy Winehouse? Yeah, I kind of do that under my eyes instead. So, hey ho. Right, using the flat top brush. This is similar to um, the other one, but it's, it's a lot fatter, so it's great for, for buffing out. Going back into the Affinity palette, I think. I think I'm going to go for 
Annie, which is kind of halfway between the orange and the yellow that I used. And that's my fridge just defrosting itself. Fabulous! You can see you really pick up a lot, so you do need to tap your brush off. I'm just going to really gently buff that all the way along under the lash line just to soften that burgundy a tad and just add a little bit of warmth of the yellow underneath because although you think well burgundy that's a that's a warm colour burgundy is very much a blue based red so it can be quite cool particularly when you team it with a blue like I have on the top lid so I just want to bring some of the warmth of the spotlight eye down I like that. Right, I am now going to pause you one more time just while I do my mascara and highlight and everything. Um, actually, I could show you putting the highlight in my eyeball shower. I'm actually going to use my sleek highlighting palette. This is the Midas Touch. And I'm going to go in with this blue rhinestone and mix it with the white, which is cubic zirconia. So I'm going to start off with the blue. I'm just picking it up on, again, another little flat top brush. Got this from me about years ago. I'm going to pop this smack in the corner of my eye there. Just bring it underneath the first bit of the tear duct. Just to meet the under eye colour there that I've got going on. Because for my eye shape I found that is the most uh, flattering way to do my inner corner. But, you know, you don't have to pull it underneath your eye if you don't want to. You can just do the inner corner itself. Oh, so pretty. I've forgotten how pretty this highlighting palette is. And then I'm going to go into the cubic zirconia, which is the white. I'm going to pop that right up under the tail of my brow. Just to add a, a flash of brightness there. As I said, if you wanted to, you could actually use this over the, the white V that we've got going on. But because of my hooded lids, if I do that, it's going to transfer all over the place. Not hooded lids, deep set eyes. But people with hooded lids will suffer exactly the same issues that I do. Um, I might put a wee bit of eyeliner on. If I do, I'll do that off camera because... Otherwise, I, I, it'll make this film ridiculously long. And I do have a mini tutorial on doing a winged liner, so you can see how I do that. Um, right, so I'm going to do um, highlight, mascara, lippy, maybe liner. I haven't decided yet. And I'll be back with the overall look. Hope you're going to enjoy this. There we go. I'm done. I'm back. I did do a little bit of eyeliner. Um, I dragged this out because I forgot I'd got it. Uh, it's a Korean brand. Eye of Horus. And it's the Copper Sphinx Liquid Metals. Like if you just give you a quick zoom in. So what I actually did was, because it was so patchy in the corner there and it was really annoying me, I just went over it with this copper eyeliner. So you can still see a little patch of the purple there, but we've still got the berry tone on the inside and you can see where my eye has just completely made it go horrific, but there we go. 
Uh, as to what's on the rest of my face, the foundation is Estee Lauder Double Wear in 1C0 Shell. I used a combination of Revolution Conceal and Define uh, in Peach to colour correct the under eyes and then use my Tarte Shape Tape in Porcelain Beige. For concealer, I set it with Coty Airspun, um, translucent, translucent, translucent extra coverage, <laughs> which apparently I'm finding quite difficult to say. Um, I went in with my Gerard Cosmetics Starlet palette, and I used the hashtag Forever Bronzer and the First Class blush really like this and it's so lightweight to carry as well it's great for traveling um and before you ask no this was not pr this was not store credit this was me using my own money buying this just to prove a point because although i am a gc affiliate i still buy stuff from their site and i might use my discount code when i'm doing that why not? Um, because I'm kind of moving away so much from uh, very, very matte looking skin. This is a tip that I picked up from Lacey from Spooky Lips and Fat Hips. This is the Wet n Wild bronzer. I'm, I'm paying as a pint of milk and even that ain't going to bronze me, sweetheart. This is the Reserve Your Cabana. Um, bronzer. You can see huge great pan of it but what it does um, I just lightly dusted it all over my face using a big old floofy brush um, and it, it works in a similar way to how I would imagine that the hourglass powders work because it, it's, it's just like a finishing powder it's, it, 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 it took away the very very sort of like flat matte without adding shimmer it, it, it kind of made my skin look more skin like if that makes any sense whatsoever um, the highlight you know was sleek I did a mixture of the blue and the white because it's me why not uh, mascara is the uh, Essence Maximum Definition Volume Mascara. Uh, Lippy is this I Heart Revolution. This is their Unique Unicorns Lipstick in shade Wildflower. Now what I love about these is, first off, they're shaped perfectly for your lips. But also, can you see those indentations look? Look. You've got little starfish all the way around it because it's unicorn ones. Or maybe it's stars rather than starfish. Um, I know that the mermaid ones have got um, like almost like fish scales, and the dragon ones have got like dragon scales on. But I just these are really nice. They're really moisturising as well. And I just wanted because the eyes were so dramatic. I just wanted something a little bit softer. Um, just just for the lips. Setting spray that I used today was, I swear this is not a sponsored and I'm not trying to shove it down your throat but I love my sleigh all days. This is in watermelon. Um, is that it? I think that's it. I told you about the eyeliner. So there we go. I'm going to put the picture back up here again of champagne and like I said because it's so sharp and, and sort of graphic I wanted quite a sharp angled definition between the colours but then I just I just wanted the halo eye to be a little bit more blended and you do get that little pop of white just as I tilt my head back like this. So what do you think? Did I make a good job of this? Would you have done something different? Let me know. Let me know in the comments how you would have done this differently. And if you've got uh, Insta and you want to do your version of that or even try and recreate this, which let's face it, you don't need to be an expert to recreate this because I am far from an expert, which I fully hold my hands up to. Um, 
I'm just a makeup enthusiast who enjoys putting colour on my face. And now you've watched mine, you really must go and watch Val's video and just see how different or maybe how similar the looks are. Because that's that's the beauty of this series. This is why I started it, because it's so interesting to use the same picture and have two different people create so far two very very different looks each time so don't forget to go and see Val and if you are here from Val's channel hi hello welcome I apologize for the rant at the start you don't always get that with me in fact you very rarely get rants with me because normally I'm quite a laid-back easygoing kind of girl right I hope you enjoyed uh, the latest instalment of this photo inspiration series. Please double check you're still subscribed because I am still getting people saying to me I will subscribe to you and now I'm not. YouTube unsubscribe me, I don't know why. Um, so do double check that. Don't forget to check out Val. Don't forget to check out my girlies from the Beauty YouTuber Growth Group. Now. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is your stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.